Introducing the Citizen Verizon Assembly, a virtual town hall featuring Andrew Yang, Yara Shahidi, and Matthew McCarthy, fellow citizens talking about economic, environmental, and social advancement, all working to move the world forward. The Citizen Verizon Assembly. Join us live July 28th at 5 p.m. on Yahoo Finance and Verizon's Twitter. Hey everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to Up to Speed. That's a little preview of what's to come next week at our inaugural Citizen Verizon Assembly. We're bringing together business leaders, activists, and thought leaders on the importance of corporate responsibility to address the most pressing global economic, environmental, and social issues, and spotlighting Verizon's new commitment through keynotes and panels with leaders from around the globe. The event will be live streamed on Yahoo Finance next week, July 28th, from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And when we think about corporate responsibility, one of the things that does come to mind is our support of small business, particularly since the pandemic began. Of course, we had the popular Pay It Forward Live series that brought together some of the biggest names in music and gaming to support small business, as well as a weekly webinar series that offered valuable tools and advice to those businesses. Well, earlier this week, we launched a small business resource hub from the Verizon Business Group to provide additional tools and, and resources for those businesses as they start their recovery in the, from the pandemic. So TJ Fox from VBG is joining us here live today to talk a little bit more about it. TJ, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, Katie, how are you today? Thanks for having me. I'm great, I'm great. So I thought maybe let's kind of start at like a, a top level view. Like what are you and your team hearing from small businesses out in the marketplace? Yeah, so uh, obviously we have our pulse on what's happening on a daily basis. Uh, small businesses are buying. We're supporting them uh, every day since uh, the pandemic. Um, I think that we've also been doing a lot of surveys uh, internally with our customers and externally. And some of the things that uh, we're seeing from small businesses and their needs, um, above and beyond the financial pieces, is uh, uh, the investment in technology uh, that they know that they need to, to, to hit. And uh, the digital transformation that may be small and, and quite frankly, medium businesses, Katie, that have maybe uh, put off um, are now completely essential for them uh, to, to operate in this new normal as they're going forward to work. Uh, some of the statistics that we're seeing, um, which are, are pretty optimistic, uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a renewed confidence, Katie, uh, out there. Uh, um, in our most recent survey, close to 68% of businesses um, have said that uh, they believe that they can make up uh, the losses they've incurred during uh, COVID-19. I think the other piece beyond kind of financial assistance, uh, small businesses kind of cite uh, that 42% of them uh, need more assistance and, you know, uh, we call it IT or internally GTS, right? Uh, technology, connectivity, and then another 41% around their e-commerce where uh, whether that was the restaurant or small business, maybe didn't have an e-commerce presence. Uh, clearly, these are key areas that uh, they need to tap into. And when you're talking about that connectivity, especially reliable connectivity, Katie, is most important. This isn't, uh, hey, I'm, I'm checking my Facebook. This is I'm running my business in an e-commerce uh, right. scenario. So uh, when you have mission-critical applications that you're going to put into the cloud, uh, you know, the connectivity, both wired and wireless, is absolutely essential. So I think that, um, I think the other thing that we're, we're seeing from some of the surveys, and we'll do another one here in uh, 60 days, is um, they're, they're planning on expanding their businesses, especially around their digital presence, uh, to provide more flexibility uh, in the future. So I, I think that, um, and that's just our internal survey, we're seeing very similar things uh, externally as well. I think the other thing that we're seeing over the last few weeks in certain parts of the country um, with uh, some of the hotspots, we're having to uh, manage through that uh, as well. So um, it's uh, very dynamic, um, but uh, obviously the small businesses are absolutely critical uh, to the success of our economic growth here, especially in the United States and quite frankly, globally. Sure. So, so you know, talking about those needs that the customers, those small business customers have, you know, beyond financial and, and some of the, the things they're looking to do to, you know, support their business, but now also grow their business. 
how does the, the Small Business Resource Hub help them help us help them meet those needs? Yeah, so uh, we call it uh, the Comeback Coach, um, and uh, it's, an, it's an entire program uh, that we announced earlier this week, Katie. And uh, some of it is definitely the hub uh, where um, customers can have the connectivity, the collaboration, and the security uh, that we provide on a daily basis. But it's all in kind of one resource. I think the other thing is since the beginning of the pandemic, we have uh, had a lot of relief programs, a lot of different programs. All of those will be associated in one spot. Uh, that way, uh, a customer, uh, a small business customer in particular, can uh, just go to that one spot to uh, access all the information, our webinars, um, our products and services. Uh, but the key piece about Comeback Coach is kind of the content-led initiatives uh, that we're going to have. We're selecting small businesses. We're pairing them up with business influencers and leaders, and we're going to uh, essentially um, capture uh, how we interact with them uh, over, over the course of the next month. And then we'll have episodes that other businesses in similarly situated scenarios uh, can look and see how they have been navigating uh, the digital piece, the e-commerce piece, the connectivity piece, the security piece. Um, and, and I think that that's kind of the uh, beyond the valuable advice. It's that combined with um, our products and services and then combined with uh, our webinar series. These are powerful uh, tools that will be in just one spot for a business uh, to utilize. Cool. So, so beyond Comeback Coach and the Hub, tell us a little bit about the other you know, programs and initiatives we have in place that are supporting small business. Yeah, so I, I think that uh, you had mentioned it. Uh, our Pay It Forward Live was uh, phenomenal, very successful. It really, uh, I, I think, put the spotlight on how important small businesses are in the communities in which we all live, work, and recreate. Um, the, the work we did with the small business grants, um, the webinar series. You think about these webinar series that we've been hosting on a weekly basis. We've had over 30,000 attendees, small business owners, attend these. And not really to talk about Verizon. These are all things that were, we were helping them. A good example was we had the small business administrator uh, get on and talk about how to navigate PPP and some of the loan programs that were happening across the U.S. Um, and I think that uh, I'm really excited about what we launched in the beginning of um, July, which is our uh, Women in Business initiative. And uh, we partner with Circle Around, which is a, uh, uh, a nonprofit subsidy of the Girl Scouts and the National Association of Women in Business. There are more than 10 million women-owned businesses in the United States, and it's a fast-growing part of uh, our economy. And in our most recent survey, uh, and this is why we're doing this, 49% of the women own businesses uh, thought they'd uh, find helpfulness being networked with kind of like-minded female business leaders uh, and owners. So Tammy Irwin, the, the CEO of Verizon Business Group, uh, she'll be hosting a, a set of uh, uh, episodes or series with uh, industry leaders. Uh, it'll be around media and finance and uh, sports, public sector, et cetera, over the coming months. So th these are things that uh, as well um, help uh, businesses, small businesses, um, and uh, uh, women in business uh, help us uh, move forward. And I think it goes very nicely with what you described earlier uh, around Citizen Verizon, which, uh, you know, the digital inclusion, uh, the climate protection, and uh, the human prosperity piece. Absolutely. So, TJ, any, uh, you know, kind of final thoughts as, as we wrap up our, our time today? Look, I, I think that uh, uh, we, these are dynamic situations uh, that we're navigating. Uh, we have the uh, the right uh, to assist uh, customers, both small and large, uh, with our network. The network team is doing an incredible job, as is our customer service, our sales, our marketing product. You go across uh, across the gamut as we've been serving our customers. But when you think of uh, what we've been bringing to market, whether it's our blue jeans acquisition, uh, our one talk, what we're doing around our business security suites. Uh, we had a product launched uh, a few weeks ago in our mass business with the uh, Fios, security is absolutely critical as these endpoints continue to get dis uh, dispersed uh, as we're in a work from home or just a new way to uh, digitally uh, engage their customers. It's absolutely critical that uh, uh, we continue to assist um, with our mission critical networks, products and services. So uh, with that, Katie, I'll turn it back to you and uh, thanks for having me.
All right. Thanks so much, TJ, and thanks for giving us an update on <clears throat> how we're supporting our small business customers. And it's really awesome to see those experiences that we're putting together for them, from the comeback coach to supporting women in business. And, you know, speaking about customer experience and, and digital, like TJ just did, you know, on the, on the consumer group side, we talk about we want to be as famous for the customer experience as we are for our network. And digital is one of the tools that's helping us work, march toward that goal. Jeremy recently sat down with Aparna Kurjakar, who leads customer experience and transformation, transformation in BCG. They talked about how digital is the red carpet to customer experience, how it can help us meet customers where they are and want to be served, and even how it can help our V-teamers serve them better. Check this out. Hey, what's up, everybody? Going digital, it's something that we have talked about uh, for a long time as a company, and even more now frequently in the past few months when the COVID-19 pandemic forced us inside and online. But for Verizon, the concept of a digital-enabled customer journey is something that the team has been working on for a very long time, not just a quick fix during a tough time, I should add, uh, but a future of customer interaction. Uh, today, talking to Aparna Kuchakar, who leads the customer experience and transformation team to learn more. Aparna, thanks so much for joining me. How are you today? Absolutely, thank you, doing really well. And thank you for having me over to talk about this exciting journey we're on, no pun intended, with our customers on digital. That's great. So in the simplest terms, what is the digital journey and what does it look like for our customers? But Jeremy, we are very, very ambitious in our goals uh, when it comes to customer service and serving our customer with the exquisite experiences. We want to be as famous for our customer experience as we are for our network. It's as simple as that. And we believe that digital is a fine tool in our toolkit that can help us with those exquisite experiences, those experiences that can be personalized, that can be contextualized to where you are, and that can be totally effortless. The name of the game is to enable the customer to be able to connect with us the way they want to, on their terms. That's the easiest way to put it. And the way we do it is to bring in technology, AI, ML, and data modeling to ensure that we've got the best for the customer so that the customer can see digital as their red carpet to start their experience with Verizon and then connect with us through the right way as a lifeline that digital provides. So that's a unique approach that we have and we're really excited about how the customers are thriving with that experience. You mentioned AI, artificial intelligence, ML, machine learning. Give me some more of the behind the scenes of, of what the team has done to bring the uh, digital journey to life for our customers. Yeah. We've been hard at work curating and creating these experiences for the customers. We have digital for every transaction that you can think of be it when a customer wants to join in new with Verizon, you want to change your phone, you want to upgrade, change your price plans, something as simple as account managing, checking your bills, uh, paying, we've got digital for that. But the key is it's something which where we are ensuring the customer has the choice so they can be safe, they can be convenient, convenient, and at the same time supported by the right kinds of transparency. Not just that, what the key input here from the customer we take is where they are on the journey. So you can do self-serve, you can be digitally guided, or we can enhance your experience when you're on that customer service call with digital. The exciting thing is we're taking that same technology, that AI ML you talked about, and enabling our representatives, our agents to assist you really well. All in all, that puts us on a great journey of trust and innovation that the customers are so expecting from us in today's day and age. How much of an impact have the events over the past few months uh, had on speeding up digital experiences? Uh, you mentioned some good examples there, both for us internally at Verizon and our customers. Yeah, you know, with all that we were doing and preparing towards with digital, COVID just came in and pushed us outside our envelope, not just us, but even the customers. And what we've learned is that customers are totally willing to see us outside of that traditional retail or customer service paths, but they want to make sure that this is convenient and they want to make sure that this is something that is automated in ways where it's bringing in value to them. So the key really is not to think of it as digital or 
or retail, it's fidgetal. It's physical, detail, digital, bringing it all together. And what that does is it brings the best of all the channels we have. We are proud of our customer service, our representatives were there to serve you. We're proud of our, of, of our retail reps uh, and what they can do. And we're bringing in digital in ways where that can be served to the customer. And we are maniacally focused to ensure that we're stitching these journeys. So depending on you as the customer where you are, we can offer you that best optimal path. And that is resonating really well with the customer. You got to go with what uh, feels right for yourself as a customer. It sounds like as we looked at the path forward and uh, whatever our new normal looks like, how does the digital journey continue to evolve? Yeah, this is where there's a lot of exciting stuff that's happening. We are focused on making sure that we have journeys that you can start anywhere and you can end anywhere. So you can buy a device online and go pick up curbside. We're focused in ensuring that there are some account manage management stuff that you can be doing on digital in ways that are safe and secure. We're focused in bringing in physical and digital together in digital ways so that you can walk into a store and be completely touchless. That's the need of COVID today, and it's here to stay. We're also making sure that we've got chatbots that are in AI enabled, so they enable your journey and enhance your journey in ways that weren't possible yesterday. All in all, we believe that this is about empowering our customer and giving them those choices. We do believe that if we have a, an app for you, a dot com for you, where you come in and in five clicks, you can be a Verizon customer, you're going to stick with digital. You're going to stick with Verizon and it's going to give you that experience that you remember just like the great network that we are built on. A lot of exciting stuff, Aparna. Thank you so much for sharing the uh, a little glimpse into what the digital journey will look like uh, to help us understand a bit better. i uh, got an exciting video here to watch. Have a look. to pay my bill. Happy to help with that. Your minimum payment due is $75. How much would you like to pay? Love that video. Gets us so excited to see what's coming up next on the digital journey. And we'll be checking in with Aparna and the team regularly to see, see what's coming next. But Coming up tomorrow, it's the next installment of uh, Verizon's Staycation Road Trip. Where is Andy's camper heading to next? We will leave you with a little hint. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, you're up to speed. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. So where exactly is our Staycation Road Trip headed next? Here are just a few hints. This city brews more beer than any other city in the nation. 300 days of sunshine keeps everyone smiling. And the song I was playing should be a pretty big hint. Can you guess where I'm going next? Find out Thursday on Up to Speed, noon Eastern, as our staycation road trip rolls on. Here's one more hint for you. It's not West Virginia, mountain mama, take me home, country roads.